Hello and welcome back to the Principled Entrepreneurship Conference here in New York City. I'm Matthew Bunsen, Executive Editor for EWTN News and also Washington Bureau Chief for EWTN News. Delighted uh, to serve as sort of your facilitator uh, as uh, EWTN helps uh, the Bush School at the Catholic University of America as well as the Napa Institute uh, here at this conference on Principled Entrepreneurship. Our goal is to really present to you, as best we can, uh, the, the lived experience of this conference. That means also being able to spend some time with some of the conference participants, some of the speakers and panelists. And to that, uh, I'm joined by Iqbal Qadir, uh, who is a senior fellow at the Ash Center uh, at Harvard University. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I know that uh, you're going to be one of the panelists uh, right. here at this conference. Mm. It's striking to me how a, a conference like this is able to bring people from literally all over the world, we'll talk more about that right. in a minute, on some of the key principles that we need to have guiding us uh, in business. I'd love to hear a little bit more about sure. you, though, sure. uh, before we get into that. Okay. I, uh, by the way, uh, because it's a conference on entrepreneurship, I founded a center of entrepreneurship at MIT, and I taught there for 10 years, raising uh, MIT students, mentoring them to have them become entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, before that, I was, an, I was an entrepreneur myself, and I established um, and initiated, established, many forces come together, many people worked on it. A company called Grameen Phone, which has now about 80 million subscribers in Bangladesh. So almost- 80 million? 80 million, which is about half the population of the country. Right. And of course there are other mobile phone companies. So virtually all adults have mobile phones now in Bangladesh. And the interesting thing is, but some of these principles, I actually have come to this conference for two important reasons. Yeah. One is Michael Novak wrote his book uh, 40 years ago and educated us about how the world should be. Right. And there's another additional interesting reason. <coughs> Michael's younger brother, I think younger brother, I don't remember his la first name, actually died in Bangladesh in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And subsequently his another brother, James Novak, studied Bangladesh for many years and published a book in 1993 uh, published by Indiana University Press mm -hmm. called Bangladesh, Reflections on Water, something like that. But he's, he really delved into the country and that helped me go back to my country because it made me feel proud of Bangladesh, which had a very illustrious, prosperous history yeah. in the past, which James Novak has gone into. So I felt I had to do something myself because I was in America at the time. I've come to America nearly 50 years ago. Yeah. So the bottom line is both brothers helped me. Okay. And yeah. James Novak ended up studying in Bangladesh, trying to find where his father, where his brother died. Mm. Okay. So another brother has sacrificed a great deal for Bangladesh. Yes. But coming back to this, so the Novak family, I've been very admiring of. Now coming back to this, I started my odyssey about 30 years ago. And eventually 25 years ago, the company got launched. Mm -hmm. And as you see, right now, virtually all adults have mobile phones, which are powerful computers. Right. So our prime minister, he, with a um, lot of wisdom, she declared a initiative called Digital Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. okay? And that Digital Bangladesh initiative in 2009 has given rise to quite a few other digital phenomena in the country. Okay. And that is actually giving rise to, in my view, shifting the arc from uh, Michael's, uh, let's say, democratic socialism to right. democratic capitalism. That yes. is taking place. So I can tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah. But yeah. there is, uh, the, I would say, the Prime Minister has done a lot, mm -hmm. and so has Michael Novak and James Novak. A little bit through me. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit through, yes, exactly. Yes. So it, Bangladesh then in some ways is a, is a perfect test case of how... Yeah, I like would say so, principled especially because, see, the, there's another interesting coincidence. Uh, Michael Novak wrote his book 
in the in 1982, published in 1982, but it was brewing over in the 70s, as other speakers have said. But so was digital technologies yeah. were brewing for a while. Right. Okay. In fact, in 1981, the year before Michael Novak wrote his uh, published his book, mm -hmm. um, the Time magazine called the personal computer the machine of the year, as opposed to man of the year. Okay? Right. Because these machines became so prevalent mm -hmm. that they felt they cannot ignore it. Okay. But so those machines today is puny in power compared to the smartphones people have already in their right. hands. So the, the, the point is the Michael Novak's thesis or vision is coming to reality mm -hmm. through all these computing technologies. Okay. It, it can have problems, mm -hmm. but I give you five industries as an example. So for instance, when Michael Novak wrote the book, the, at that time, the, um, all, Bangladesh had very few phones, all fixed phones. Right. Okay. Maybe one in a thousand people had a phone. One in a thousand people. Yeah. Okay. Today, virtually all adults have a phone. Mm -hmm. okay. All adults. And the reason I became a little bit known is that I dared to go to the poorest of a poor country. Okay. That is why I went to Grameen Bank, mm -hmm. which gave loans to poor people. Mm -hmm. okay. So actually that has worked out wonderfully. Mm -hmm. okay. so, the, so telecommunication is a major change, and these mobile phone companies are private companies. Then television used to be one state-owned company. Through the digital technology, now there are 30 different television channels. There is a lot of discussions and whatnot, yes. etc. Okay. Then there is a, let's say, there is mobile banking has taken off. Some right. hundred million people get mobile banking services. And of course, there is the internet, through the phone, etc. Right. Okay. And YouTube is another source of education. So social media, YouTube, so education, lots of things going on. Mm -hmm. And the individual, I believe, is a lot more empowered. Right. And that's why the Prime Minister was right in trying to push towards digital Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. okay. And through that, people are getting education. And one interesting point I would like to make is that when I uh, started the initiative close to, uh, let's say the, the company was launched 20 years ago, the GDP of the country was 40 billion. Mm -hmm. okay. Now it's 400 billion. Right. It may be a little bit disturbed because the Ukrainian crisis and all that, the exchange rate, all Plus COVID four countries have gone. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how it has adjusted. Yeah. But it was 400 billion just last um, year. And compared to India and Pakistan, okay, Bangladesh used to be radically behind them. But at this point, it's a little bit ahead of India. Okay. And significantly ahead of Pakistan. Right. Simply because people are operating more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So now I want to make another point. So if you go back to Michael Novak's uh, thesis that the world of morality, the world of uh, politics, and the world of commerce yes. need to be balanced, but how do you bring them to balance? What is the knob we can turn? Mm -hmm. The main knob is the people. Right. So if they're empowered, they're economically advancing, Okay, mm -hmm. they hold their, they elect their government, they um, bring their morality into play. Okay, then I think the balance is the key to that balance is the people having people waking up, right? And that waking up takes place through the powerful device in their own hands. Mm -hmm. And this is why all of these intellectuals are correct. And we had, a, we had a good move as a political system. Yes. The Prime Minister calling it a digital Bangladesh initiative in 2009. It's striking though, isn't it, how uh, it, it always comes down to the dignity of the human person yes. and empowering yes. the human person. Yes. Because that cannot be, we cannot emphasize more. Uh, we cannot de-emphasize that foundation, let's right. say it that way. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. But also then uh, taking the ideas, but they, they are oftentimes, they're, they, they're kept very idealistic or they're principles, yeah. but still have to be 
actually tested. put into action. Right. Yeah. So I may have played some role in it, but that that's uh, that's all. But the see, for example, the cell phone hasn't come because of you and I did something about it. <laughs> it has come right. through <laughs> lots of other people. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so it is. It is a question of. A, a, a river of ideas, river of things, but few places we can we can um, bend the river a little bit, right? You know, uh, facilitate the flow a little bit. Yeah. And uh, th in that sense, I may have played a role. But um, Michael Novak was right. Okay. James Novak certainly inspired me because he taught me about Bangladesh. Yeah. Bangladesh used to be a very prosperous country. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it was destroyed through colonialism and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it has it is rejuvenating under new leadership, under new digital technologies and all these things. Right. Yeah. So for you, coming from Bangladesh, but now you're at Harvard, mm -hmm. uh, you are a, a well-known figure in many international circles. To be able to attend a conference like this, the value uh, of that, and we're about to uh, be heading into our, our first panel for the afternoon, but. Uh, for you, what's the value of coming to a conference like this? Oh, it it it, uh, it pokes my brain, so my neurons get uh, more activated, <laughs> <laughs> and yes. hopefully they become better. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it is it is a very good thing because I hear other people's ideas. Yeah. And where they are coming from, so I become more more activated and more civilized at the same time. Right. <laughs> so what are some of your greatest worries? Uh, as we move forward now in, in a very difficult economic and social... It's a very difficult situation. We don't know. Let's hope and pray right. it goes in the right direction. I mean, Ukraine, did we know anything about it? Right. The energy crisis, the climate crisis, mm -hmm. those are my big worries. Actually, Bangladesh is a potential um, big victim of mm -hmm. the climate crisis. Not, And, of course, the Ukrainian crisis is a temporarily good... Um, good um, pro money, big problem because mm -hmm. the oil price has gone up. Bangladesh has no mineral resources, right? And that is another reason communication is very important to it, because if the people are more active, people are more efficiently coordinating their activities with each other, right? They become more productive. That's how we jumped from 40 billion to 400 billion. Mm -hmm. Again, good leadership is in the mix. <laughs> okay. Yes, but people are more more efficient. Well, Pope Francis uh, always gives a warning about what he calls ideological colonization. What uh, ideological colonization? Ideological yes. colonization. The idea that is also bad. That uh, <laughs> I think you would agree. Yeah. Uh, the idea Any though, kind that, of colonization is bad. That <laughs> somehow we're attaching to things like aid, uh, help and development, a lot of the things that have proven to be so devastating to the, the West uh, in terms of... Yeah, you see, it's, it's, a, it's a long, complicated story. But the bottom line is, countries should be left on their own devices. Right. Okay. And people should be left on their own devices. Okay. But sometimes we, um, we don't do that. Yeah. Okay. And big, powerful countries push other little ones around. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, one secret to that, count, to that problem is to even little countries becoming more powerful. Mm -hmm. And they can become powerful by being more, more efficient, more capable, more skillful. Right. For example, Singapore has done that. Mm -hmm. okay. Singapore is, um, is, uh, doesn't have mineral resources. Okay. And in fact, people worry about Bangladesh that we are, uh, we are too dense, we're too many people in a small piece of land. Just not true. Right. Singapore is eight times more denser than we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if Singapore can solve its population density... And, and very efficiently. Yeah, we should be able to <laughs> right. do it too. Yeah. We at least have some land. They don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> but is there, is there a worry that um, government... One of the complaints is sometimes given about Singapore is the level of government involvement in daily life. Uh, no, you see, the, 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 what is really necessary is stability. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bangladesh, see, what happened is that any country becomes unstable after it is poked around, pushed around too much. Okay. Right. Because they don't, they don't then trust each other inside the system. That's right. Okay. 
So stability is very important. What Singapore had, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit by force, I don't know, but it was, it was stable, mm -hmm. okay? It had very strong property rights, okay? By the way, England was, didn't start out democratic, mm -hmm. okay? It became democratic through, through commerce, right. okay? But what it did have since 1689, mm -hmm. stability. Stability. Yeah, we can go all the way back to... We can go back. But before that, you cannot, because there's the highly unstable. Even the right. king was executed. That's right. So what I'm saying yeah. is that the, it was stable since at least 1689. Mm -hmm. But then it became powerful and troubled us. So... Okay. And we need some stability ourselves. Yeah.